Good morning. We're so glad you joined us at St. Wilfred Episcopal Church in Sarasota. It is the sixth Sunday of Easter and we're doing morning prayer. If you have the Book of Common Prayer, we will be on page 80 when we begin the service. Please just enjoy the music, enjoy the hymns and the prayers. Our service begins in the Book of Common Prayer on page 80, page 80. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please turn to page 82, page 82, and we will say together the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Please turn to page 674 in the Book of Common Prayer, 674. Psalm 66, verses 7 to 18. Please join our deacon.
bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip? For you, O oh God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver has tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through the fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifice of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in, but in truth, truth God, God has heard me. He, he has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love from me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul stood in front of Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it. He who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth. And he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. Though indeed he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being as even some of your own poets have said. For we too are his offering. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. If you have... Uh, lift every voice and sing. We're at number 60, but a familiar hymn we're going to sing, How Great Thou Art. <laughs>
my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I had a friend whose name was Catherine. She was 20 years older than me and recently widowed when we first met. And she began coming to my office weekly to discuss life and faith and other weighty subjects, and as the months and years passed, we became BFFs, best friends forever. It was as if we were fashioned to fit together. She was trying to find and articulate a faith in God and make that real in her life. I had that faith and vocabulary, but she, on the other hand, had a facility with human relationships that was amazing to me, and I yearned to know how to do what she did. Catherine was a woman of the world. She knew her way around boardrooms. She knew her way around tiny country diners. And she firmly believed that every person she met had something for her, something to teach her or to share, something she would not find anywhere else. And so for something more than 20 years, we grew together, meeting as often as we could, sharing our lives. The last time I saw her, she was in intensive care at the local hospital, and we knew she was dying. And we had talked about death a lot, and yet on this occasion, we could hardly say the word, because it was right there in the room with us. And I left the hospital that day overcome by fear. In a very real way, Catherine was helping me to grow up. She was helping me to figure out the mystery that was ministry, this strange occupation in which I was engaged. And I could not imagine going on without her. That was the state of mind for the disciples on this night so long ago when Jesus was bidding them farewell. He was talking about leaving them, and they didn't understand because they could not imagine how they would go on without him. He had only scratched the surface of what they needed to know to be able to continue this ministry he was handing them. And Jesus was not only their teacher and their guide, he was also their plan B. He was to be the safety net when all else might fail. How could they possibly continue if he left? It occurred to me that we are feeling some of that same fear today. Because in these days of the virus, we are losing so much. And from day to day, it is simply not clear what will be retained or regained? Most of us are not being forced to give up an individual person, although some are. But what we are having to do is let go of our whole way of life. Our daily routines are wiped out. Our assumptions about safety are gone. Our manner of interacting with each other is in a whole new world. We are losing our grip on our very way of being. Now, Jesus knows his friends are afraid. 
He knows what they're in the middle of, and he knows, even if they don't, what they're going to be facing in the next few days. And we heard last week, in the earlier part of the same speech, his reassurance. He said to them, now I'm going to, to prepare a place for you. So gathered at this last meal together, before he faces arrest, he makes yet another promise. Not only am I going to prepare a place for you, but I'm going to send you a presence, an advocate. Now, in the ancient Greek meaning, an advocate is a person who comes and stands beside you, providing comfort and support. It literally means to come alongside another. So we need to pay attention here, because as Jesus is preparing to leave his work and his friends, he is not giving them a list of tasks. He doesn't suggest that they should go take more classes under another rabbi, nor does he encourage them to seek out a few weeks of internship with another healer or teacher. Instead, he directs them toward a way of being, and he promises them a relationship that will sustain them in this way. He has already given them the commandment to love one another. And now he promises to send a presence, a lover, a friend, a support person who will stay beside them no matter what, through thick and thin. So he doesn't give them things to do. He reminds them of how to be. They are to be lovers. Love is what will keep them going when all else fails. And Jesus said to them, I will not leave you orphaned. In other words, I will not leave you without a powerful love relationship that will care for you and nurture and guide you. He said, because I live, you too will live. Of course, you and I know that it is that day-to-day -day living the being of a person hour after hour, day by day, that is the hardest of all when all of our ordinary pathways and routines are taken away. I have known at least two actual orphans in my life whose voices float to the, whose faces float to the surface whenever I hear that word. One of them was a school girlfriend. She moved to my school early in the middle school years. And I admired her because she was so independent. She was so together. I mean, you may remember that middle school is a hard time. And young teens are just vessels full of hormones. I used to call them vessels full of percolating hormones because they were always bubbling up. <laughs> In our midst, this girl was steady as a rock. She was not bullied by anyone. No one would dare. She submitted graciously to our teachers, but it was clear that she was going to navigate her own waters. Well, we finished school and we all went our ways, and over the years, she and I would bump into each other, usually at a class reunion or something. And I found as an adult, I found her difficult to be with. To use Star Trek lingo, she had her shields up all the time. She was independent and together, but she was tightly wound. And there was a feeling about her of inflexibility, a sense of rigidity, an echo you could almost hear of my way or the highway. And so I was not surprised to learn that she never married, nor did she have children. I was surprised to realize that years of being fiercely independent might leave someone alone and friendless in the end. Hmm. Who knew? The other orphan was functionally an orphan in that his birth parents were alive but not in contact with him. And we, my husband and I, adopted him. His name was Sean and he was 11 when he came to live with us. But from 18 months of age until the day we adopted him, Sean had been tossed around from one facility to another. By the age of two, he was labeled as a troubled child. 
And his response to this label and to the unsteadiness of his life, which and that response had been supported by the various institutions he was in, and the response was to become totally dependent for everything. He simply didn't do anything for himself at 11 years of age. If you sat him at the table, he wouldn't eat until you said, pick up your fork and feed yourself. At age 11, he was unable to dress himself in the morning, not because he couldn't put the clothes on, but because he couldn't pick out what to wear. And when the kids all mobbed in the kitchen at lunchtime and I said, okay, it's a PB&J or a hot dog, what do you want? The rest of them would choose and eat and go and Sean would still be there, agonizing over his decision. Well, after a lot of rocky years, Sean now lives in a custodial facility. That is, he is in an apartment with other adults with similar needs. He works a sheltered job and lives a relatively normal life, although it's outside the mainstream. Some 25 years ago, he called my ex-husband and said to him, look, I'm sorry, but I've decided I don't want to be your son anymore. I decided I really didn't want a family. Bye. We keep up with him through the graces of the Goodwill Organization, which is his support entity. And we know that he's fine and he remains about the same. And we were for, for a time part of his life. But Sean was unable to love in any way. He was broken by the beginning of his life. So what is it that would keep you from being a lover? What is it that would keep you from accepting the gift of a presence in your life who wanted nothing more but to love you? Would you be open to that love? Or would you want to say to that person, I'll do it myself, I'm fine, I can handle this. What is it that makes us want to deny our need for protection or guidance what do you need to be able to accept love? The task before us is to love God and to love each other. And most of us cannot do that without help. We need, first of all, to be loved. We need then to experience healthy relationships, to be around healthy people, see love modeled for us. It's important. It was Arnold Toynbee who said, love is the only spiritual power that can overcome the self-centeredness that is inherent in being alive. So there is something that can overcome this ego that I have that wants to be in charge and in control. And that something is love. To live your faith is to love. And in return for your willingness to love others and to be loved, God promises us presence, support, and the gift of eternal life. And God does not break promises. Amen. Amen.
thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter, springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Joined with all nature, the manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers on page 97, page 97. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. 
Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope and we shall never hope in vain. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, and all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity and that in all we do direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today we remember all who are sick or in a sort of trouble, especially remember Joanne, William, Andrew, Margie, Carolyn, Anne, Robert, Elizabeth, Jeanette, Dee Dee, George, Joe, and Jack. Are there others? We offer prayers of gratitude for all of the healthcare workers in the nursing homes and the hospitals and all persons working in essential businesses who risk their own health to meet our needs. We rejoice with those observing birthdays, including Elizabeth Webster and Phil and Linda Stapleton who observe a wedding anniversary. Are there others? And today we remember two faithful members of this parish who have died, Margaret Murphy and Rosemary Tucker. Be with them, Lord, and be with those who mourn. Are there other personal prayers and intercessions? Please join me in the general thanksgiving, which is found on page 101, 101 in the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all of the ages. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. And the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, 
make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Hymn number 405 in the blue hymnal, if you have one, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Be seated if you're standing, or be at ease if you're not. <laughs> and um, let's just reflect for a minute on, on the life of this community and see what, what been, uh, things we need to touch on. Um, we are still making plans and intend to be back in corporate worship eventually. As I have told you before, we'll be meeting with the bishop this Tuesday uh, coming up and um, expect some direction from him as to when we might be able to return to corporate worship. I hope it's soon because this is the biggest empty room. It gets bigger every week and emptier every week. We miss you terribly. Um, as you heard, Rosemary Tucker has died and um, that there will be something we hope in the fall here that we may by which we may celebrate her life. Um, and let's see, hopefully you've had no trouble coming in this morning. We sent you this morning an address on Facebook that you just put in your browser and hit enter and it takes you right to us. So hopefully that worked for you. Um, we will have a streaming, uh, a tape, a video version of this on YouTube later this afternoon. Um, the script 
for Sunday mornings is on the home page of our, our website, stwilfred-sarasota.com. Just scroll down past the picture of the church, and there's a picture of me, and then there's a se section that says upcoming events, and there's a link in there to click on, and you can download the script either to your computer screen or you can print it out, and then you won't have to worry about not having the books. So, Bible study, thank you. Um, there's no Bible study this coming Thursday, but we will pick up again the following Thursday, so I will remind you again of that in writing, but those who would like to join us the following Thursday, we'd love to have you. Uh, the food pantry is going on, and Coleman does enjoy having volunteers, so you can contact him by phone and help out on Thursday or Friday. What else have I forgotten? Coffee hour. Coffee hour. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, I'll um, send a Zoom link when I get home, and we'll have coffee hour hopefully by 1145. That just means I have to get myself in gear and out of here in time to get home first because that's where my camera is. Um, but we hope you'll join us. Last week we had, had a drop-in surprise guest, Father Roy Shepherd and Audrey joined us and that was fun. So hope you can join us too and maybe you'll be our surprise guest. Who knows? Who? Say it again. Office hours. We have somebody in the office from 10 to 12 on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So 10 to 12, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, there is somebody pretty reliably in the office. Um, so drop by. If you drop by, wear a mask, please. And don't bring everybody you know. <laughs> what else? The brain is feeble. I forget things. Okay, then Linda, go for it. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>